Today in the news, we got a whole lot of Zen 3D, Zen 4, and DDR5. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. CES is approaching fast, and uh, for us enthusiasts, we kind of know what to expect. We know that this will be the launch of the next generation of Zen CPUs, aka Zen 3D chips with integrated vCache. According to AMD, this new technology would bring a huge leap in gaming performance. We saw two 5900X clocked at 4 gigahertz, one with and one without the cache chiplet, and depending on the game, we saw the average FPS skyrocket. Gears 5 got a 12% boost, Monster Hunter got a whole 25% boost, Dota 2 an 18% boost, etc, etc. Dr. Shu said that the average is about 15%. Now, that's Zen 3D, and we can expect AMD to tell us about it all during CES, but that's not it. According to AMD's CTO, Mark Papermaster, we're also going to get some more details on Zen 4. So far, all AMD has revealed about Zen 4 to us is that it will be built on the uh, TSMC 5 nanometer process node, that it will have twice the density, twice the power efficiency, and 1.25x the performance of currently available AMD products at seven nanometers. But that's for Genoa, AKA AMD's upcoming Epic HPC lineup. And we know that this kind of performance doesn't always translate from servers to the consumer market, which is why it's exciting that they're gonna talk about it at CES, because that's a consumer driven show. It's the consumer electronics show, which means that they're going to talk about Zen 4 for us enthusiasts. And that's not all for Zen 4. We all know that it's going to be a change in socket and chipset. It's gonna be AM5, and so far we're naming the chipsets X670 and B650. And according to leaker extraordinaire HXL over on Twitter, X670 is a beast. He said in a tweet that X670 is B650 times two. While we're unsure of exactly what this means, one thing to consider is a multi-chip module chipset with two B650s. Now, this is one interpretation. Uh, it could also simply be that it's uh, twice the size, but HXL did say that MCM or multi-chip module is a possibility. It could also be why he heard that X670 would be a difficult chipset to integrate into the ITX form factor. And lastly, to polish off all of the Zen 4 rumors, we got some, let's just say, salty news. But make sure you got your water ready. So this post came from Billy Billy and it pretty much explains the rollout according to that person. AMD would announce consumer Zen 4 at Computex, so in June, July, with a release shortly after. As we've heard from past leaks, the integrated graphics would finally make their way into the IO die. Only thing is, it would very much be a light implementation, something just to have a display output out of any CPUs. The CPU lanes would also support PCIe Gen 5, but the actual chipset wouldn't, just like with Intel's platform. So probably PCIe Gen 5 for the CPU and maybe one NVMe, and of course the rest of the lanes would be Gen 4. This person also talks about X670 being double what B650 is. This is exactly what we heard from HXL. Although this person mentions expandability specifically, so that's PCIe and NVMe lanes and other such things. And lastly, they mentioned that support for DDR4 on these chipsets is unlikely. Likely. So yeah, it's been a while since we talked about AMD. Uh, now you're pretty much up to date. And then moving on, we got DDR5. I really hope that AMD does include support for DDR4 here because the new version has some issues right now. Micron, during its uh, quarterly earning call, confirmed that, and I quote, demand for DDR5 products is significantly exceeding supply due to non-memory component shortages impacting memory suppliers' ability to build DDR5 modules. Specifically, we're talking about the PMIC and the VRM components. The two things that were moved onto the stick for the new memory standards are the two things that are holding it back. Kind of ironic. Then in monitor news, we got something that I kind of want from LG. It's a new monitor with an almost square aspect ratio. Specifically, it's 16 by 18, so it's taller than wide. 
It's called the uh, Dual Up and it's 27.6 inches with a resolution of 2560 by 2880. So twice the height of a 1440p monitor. Actually, it's just two very small 1440p monitors stacked on top of each other. Now, LG says that it's for content creators, but I don't know. I feel like it's a little too small for that. What do you guys think? To me, it's kind of perfect for people who want to watch YouTube and uh, like to leave comments because you can see the sort of full screen video at the top. At least it's going to take the full width and then the comment section right under. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and if you like monitor content, check out my review of the uh, BenQ EX3210R uh, right at the end of the video. I'm going to put it in the end card. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here, well, this time to see the monitor review, and right here to subscribe to the channel. Happy holidays, stay frosty, but don't get frostbites, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I heard you looking for me round the block. 5930K, cause I'm unlocked. H440 with an H100. Man, look at all these hard drives.